Hey everybody, on this episode of Bure Explains, we're going to talk about the PASM dial. Now, you might not have even known it was called the PASM dial, but that's the shorthand for it. And it's this dial right here on the top of your camera. And the reason it's called the PASM dial is because it's got P-A-S-M on it. My dial actually has P-S-A-M, so I guess you could call it the PASM dial. Uh, but uh, it's commonly called the PASM dial on the camera. So let's talk about the PASM dial and what it does. I'm specifically going to talk about the PASM part, the P-A-S-M. Now there are other settings on your dial and those settings can be different from camera to camera. Uh, a lot of times you're going, to have, uh, you're going to have a setting for video. If your camera has video, one of them will be a video setting. One of them will be what's called a bulb setting where the shutter stays open the entire time that you've got the button pushed. Uh, and then there's the PASM setting. Also sometimes custom settings like a C1, C2, C3. But the PASM settings are what we're going to talk about today. So what are the PASM settings in the camera? What do they do? So let's start with the easiest one, which is the last one, M. M stands for manual. And if you have your camera in M mode, then all three of your settings in the exposure triangle are set by you. And if you don't know what the exposure triangle is, then be sure and check out my video about the exposure channel. It's going to be a triangle that's going to be right up here. And so if you're in manual mode, M mode, that means that you will be setting everything. You'll set your shutter speed yourself, you'll set your aperture yourself, and you'll set your ISO yourself. Now, in order to get a good exposure, you're going to have to look at the light meter inside your camera. It may go up and down on the side, or it may go left and right underneath. Uh, but either one, you're going to have to look at that light meter and determine when you've got the exposure that you want, either by looking at the light meter and centering out your needle, or if you're using a mirrorless camera, you can just look at it. You, know, you can just look at the scene and make it darker, make it lighter, and say, well, this is what I want. So that's manual. That's the easiest one to understand, but not the easiest one to use. <laughs> okay. The next one we're going to talk about is the A, which is aperture. A stands for aperture priority, and in aperture priority, you set the aperture yourself on the camera, but the camera will set the shutter speed and the ISO for you. All right, so you control the aperture, and then the camera does the rest of the work to try and get you the proper exposure. Next is S, which stands for shutter speed. S, can you figure out what that one does? Yeah, it's the same thing as aperture, except this time it's on shutter speed. You will set the shutter speed and the camera will set the aperture and the ISO to get you the correct exposure. Now, when would you use these two settings? Why would you use these two settings? Well, the A setting I use all the time when I'm shooting in natural light because I want to control my aperture, but I don't really care so much what happens with the shutter speed and the ISO most of the time. So I let the camera take care of a lot of that. Uh, I actually have custom settings that take care of that for me too. Uh, and then the shutter speed setting, a lot of times people will use that, say you're shooting sports and you're saying, well, you know, I'm shooting football players and I need my shutter speed to be really, really high all the time. So I'll set my shutter speed, I'll put in S priority, I'll set my shutter speed where I want it to be and my shutter speed will stay locked right there and it won't move. And then the camera can make adjustments if the cloud cover comes out and my light changes, the camera will make adjustments for that, but it won't mess with my shutter speed. My shutter speed is vital in this case. So that's when you would use the S mode. So that's M, that's A, that S, and that leaves us with P. Now P, the P mode on your dial stands for program, and there's kind of a joke in the photography community that it stands for professional, because photographers, like any other, uh, any other profession that you can get into, uh, they can be a little snarky sometimes. And the reason they say P stands for professional is because a lot of people, when they first start taking pictures and saying that they're a professional photographer, they will shoot in P mode. And real photographers uh, consider you that you're not a professional photographer, a real photographer, if you shoot in P mode. So what happens in P mode? Well, if you're in P mode, the camera does everything for you. It sets your aperture, it sets your shutter speed, it sets your ISO. The camera just tries to figure out what you're taking a picture of and it shoots. So why is this an unprofessional mode? Well, professional photographers feel like the whole point of having you behind the camera is that you are having some input into what is happening. You are controlling the image, you are shaping the image. And if you are in P mode, the camera's doing everything. I mean, it is the auto mode on your camera. 
In fact, a lot of cameras that don't have a PASM dial, they just have a setting called auto. Or they'll have a setting called auto, a setting called SS for shutter speed, usually A for aperture, right? So they use different letters, but still the PASM dial is pretty much the same on every camera that you get. So P mode, auto mode, pretty much the same thing. This is the mode for people who just want to take a picture and they don't want to learn anything about photography. They just put it in P mode or they put it in auto mode and they shoot, 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 and they hope that their pictures come out okay. And a lot of times they do. The cameras are very, very smart these days. So when should you use program mode? I actually don't think you should ever use it. <laughs> I've never used program mode. Don't get me wrong, you can make adjustments in program mode. So if you're in program mode, you can use uh, something called your exposure compensation dial. And you can make adjustments. So you can say, I want it, you know, and by turning that dial, the camera will make adjustments, but you don't have real precise control over what those adjustments are, over what the camera is going to change necessarily. Uh, there's nothing you can do in program mode that you can't also easily do in aperture mode. Uh, because with aperture mode or shutter speed mode, you can also just change your exposure compensation dial and it will change your settings in your camera while maintaining the proper exposure. So they all kind of do the same thing. They all use the same exposure compensation dial. By the way, this is the international sign language for exposure compensation dial. They all use the exposure compensation dial to make changes in the settings. It's just which settings get changed will be changed according to which mode you're in. So in manual mode, I'm sorry, in Aperture mode, if you use the exposure compensation dial to make changes, it makes a change to your shutter speed and your ISO, but it doesn't touch your aperture. If you're in S mode or shutter speed mode, if you make changes, it makes changes to your ISO and your aperture, but it doesn't touch your shutter speed. If you're in manual mode, you just make changes directly to all three things. And if you're in program mode and you make changes, I honestly don't know which one it favors because I never use it. <laughs> I can't figure out why anyone needs to use program mode on their camera. I, I really I use aperture mode. Aperture mode is what you really want to use most of the time. So that's it. That's the PASM dial. P-A-S-M. Your camera may call it auto or, or SS or different letters, but they're all basically going to do the same. You have to figure out which one of those means P and A and S and M. Hey, don't forget to uh, check out my gear. It's down on my gear page right underneath this video. You can go see all the gear that I carry. And if you click a link and you buy something, I make a couple of dollars. It helps me to keep this channel going. Also, be sure and join me on Facebook. I have a great Facebook group, and it's called Pro Photo Talk with Blu-ray Perry. I'm on Instagram. I post a lot of funny stuff to Instagram and also on threads, so follow me there if you get a chance. I'd really like to have you uh, be part of my life and part of my community. And be sure and give me a like and a subscription and click the notification button so that you'll know the next time I put up a video. I tend to post just about, about every week, sometimes twice a week. So uh, it's a good channel to follow. At least, I think it's a good channel to follow. I hope you do, too. Thanks for watching.